hello my lovelies welcome back to my channel this is your girl angel from simply angel tia so as you can see i'm trying a little bit of a different format for introducing my videos let me know what you think so instead of you guys looking at my hands while i kind of show on the table what i've just made and maybe flashing some pictures here and there i wanted to try a different format like this so you guys can look at my face if you don't like it let me know if you love it let me know if you like it let me know and if you don't care how to introduce my videos let me know so i'm gonna be trying the next couple of videos like this and then uh we will see how that goes but otherwise i may just be mixing them so i can do some like this with my face showing and then some just the old way just because i'm really used to them okay so uh like i said let me know in the comments below what you think so for today's video we're going to be working on this green dress here that megan is modeling so as you guys know i call my mannequin here megan why i don't know but uh, that's her name so call her by her name please but we're going to be uh working on this dress here it's a very simple dress it's a sh not short but not very long either and it's something that we have to measure to fit so i'm gonna stress this pro probably on almost every video now i don't actually tell you guys how many um how many chains to do for what size or how many rows to do for what size i just want you guys to be aware to measure your your body or the person you're making the item for and then work with the measurements as opposed to how many chains you need to do per size so uh that's what we're going to be working on so this dress here it's very simple it's very uh, beginner friendly as well so i often try to do things very simple very simple stitches but but yet make some outfits that look nice that look complicated but they're not really complicated uh yeah so if you like it this is it here let's go ahead and get started i'm gonna take you guys to the work table so i can show you all the materials that you need for this okay let's go ahead and get started okay my lovelies so before we get started with this project i'm gonna show you all the materials that we're gonna be using and as you can see here i have my yarn i'm gonna be using this beautiful green color for this dress and this is from Azurite, 100% acrylic. The color number is 0338, which is green in my eyes. Um, this skein here is 50 grams or 140 meters. And recommended hook size for this yarn is 3.5 to 4 millimeter crochet hook, okay? Uh, you can obviously use any... Um, any yarn of your choice you just have to pay attention on how your work will turn depending on whether you're following the tutorial uh step by step or whether you're kind of uh, an advanced crochet and you can kind of adjust your sizes to fit what you're making using the yarn that you have okay for a crochet hook size i will be using a little bit uh, uh larger so i'm using uh five millimeter crochet hook which is h80 us and that's just a preference so that i can make my work a little bit on the loose side not too tight um, I have a dining needle here that we're going to use to join our panels. I have uh, some stitch markers. You can have some stitch markers laying around if you need them, a scissors and a tape measure, okay? So with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, my lovelies. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this. So for this dress, we're going to be working in a two panels. So we're going to do a front panel and a back panel, which are going to be exactly identical pieces. And then we're going to work on the sleeves uh, separately. We're going to attach the sleeves or work on the sleeves uh work on the main part to get the sleeve going okay um so for this we're going to be starting with one of the panels and i'm going to start by doing a slip knot just like this okay and then i'm going to start with um a number of chains that is equivalent to half of my panel so because we're doing a front and a back we want to do the front part the back part and they have to be equal so what i do is i measure the widest part of my hips uh, and in this case, the widest part of my hips come up to about 40, about 38, 40 inches. And I want it to be a little bit loose. So I'm going to just do uh, a chain that will stretch up to about, let's say, 42. Okay. So I will start by doing a chain of 60 for that case. And this is also a small size for those of you who want to know. So one, two. Okay. So this is my chain of 60 here. And as you can see, it's quite long. And I'm hoping that this will come up to about, uh, let's say, 20 inches if I stretch it. Because I want it to be able to fit me. And it has to be able to go all the way to um, 20. So as you can see here, if I stretch, I have about 20 inches. And it can stretch higher. It cannot go all the way to 21. But this is the stretch that you're looking for. If you want your dress to be a lot more looser 
then you can just add a few more chains here to make it looser but this should be half of what the circumference of the widest part of your hips is okay no matter what size you're making uh, this is how you would come to it and now that i have my 40 or my 60 uh, chains here i'm gonna add one more and that's gonna be my turning chain okay so i'm gonna count one two and skip those two stitches and in this third one i'm gonna go in the back of that and complete a double crochet just like that and then i'm gonna go ahead and go into the next and complete a double crochet then i'm gonna go into the next complete a double crochet and for this part here we're just gonna work in the back of our foundation chain all the way until we get to the end of our work right here okay until the end of this row and also the fact that we're doing double crochet stitches it means this is actually going to be a lot more flexible in terms of stretching and in terms of stretching and things like that is going to be a lot easier for you to put your dress on and out and as well it's going to make it a little bit loose but i recommend you do a few more stitches here so you can be a little bit loose like i said mine is about 38 inches uh and it's supposed to technically be 19 inches and as you can see i did about up to about 21 so i increased just by a few inches there okay so go ahead and work and then i will see you guys when you have reached the end of this row okay see you guys then okay my lovelies so i have completed the first row here so very simple double crochet row this is the length of half of my circumference okay or the width i should say and then we're gonna go ahead and start the next row for the next row we're gonna have a mesh section so this is a project where i'm gonna alternate between a mesh and a uh, solid okay I'm, I'm i'm liking this kind of project so hopefully you guys are not uh, minding this but i'm gonna do a chain of three the first two chains are a double crochet they count as a double crochet length and then the next uh, stitch is a chain one and so for that reason i'm not going to work anything in this stitch here because it's attached to this so it belongs to that so i'm going to skip this stitch here and in the next one here i'm going to complete a double crochet okay just like that so this is going to be my double crochet chain one and then double crochet then i'm going to do a chain one and then skip this stitch and in the next stitch right here i'm going to complete a double crochet chain one skip this stitch in the next one do a double crochet chain one skip this stitch in that next one do a double crochet and as you can see again i'm alternating this uh, variation of double crochet and chain one here and skipping a stitch all the way to the end of the row and I'll do the same and i will see you guys at the end so i can show you how to finish off this row and how to start the next row and then this is pretty much what we repeat until we have the length of this one panel but for now let's meet over here so i can show you how to finish these off okay my lovelies so i am almost at the end here so i'm just gonna go into this final stitch so as you can see this is pretty much how this looks like i've already done my chain one and so i'm gonna go into this final stitch here and complete my double crochet like that okay so this is the first uh the second row the first of the mesh and one of the uh double crochet solid and that's how you should it should look and then now we're going to do a solid uh, row like this we're going to chain two turn and then in this space that was a chain one we're going to complete a double crochet and then we're going to go on top of the previous double crochet and do a double crochet and then go into the gap under the chain one do a double crochet and on top of the chain one do a double crochet so if you really think about it we are just doing a stitch on top of each uh, on, on every stitch that we have here and that's how this row is going to be and then the next row is going to be a mesh row which means we start by doing we start by doing a chain of three and then when we do a solid row we start by doing a chain of two okay so very simple project very simple for those of you who are beginners very easy to follow along very easy to create without any complications so go ahead and do this and you're going to complete this row all the way here you should be able to do your final double crochet on top of the chain two that we started the row with uh, uh or the chain three but the chain one is uh the chain one in between so you're going to go on top of the chain two and then start your mesh row by doing exactly what we did in the previous row okay you're going to work this until you create the length of the dress that you want for this tutorial i'm going to be doing a mid length a mid length dress so it's just going to be above my knees pretty much so it's not going to be too short but it's not going to be too long either 
and so i'm going to be able to just kind of try it on or like put it against my body until i see the length that i want and when i reach that i'm going to come back to the video to show you how it looks like and then we will go ahead and work on our second panel and then when we have both panels completed we should be able to um we should be able to join them and then work on our sleeves okay i will see you guys when you have the length of your panel completed okay my lovelies so i have completed the panel here so as you can see this is pretty much how it looks like um so if i put it like this this is the way we started right here at the bottom and i worked myself all the way about 63 63 uh, rows all the way to the section that i ended up here and i ended up with the solid row as well as where how we started in the bottom so you want to start it with this it's going to make it easier for when you join your panels together okay so this is the length that i want like i said it's going to be more like uh, above my knees um how short exactly it's going to be it's going to be hard to tell until i try to put it on but i'm also going to show you a trick on how you can increase your length at the end if you do want to make it a little bit longer after you've completed everything and you see that it's not quite you know the length that you want especially for increasing not the decreases so because it will be hard to decrease this work but if you want to increase it i'll be able to show you that but anyway so this is my sorry this is my 63 rows and about uh, 30 inches uh, long i'm gonna end it here so i'm gonna just remove that by cutting it off my scissors I will cut it off a little bit long because this is going to be our neckline here so we're going to need to be able to join uh, the two panels on the neckline here on each side on top um, up above our shoulders so something let's say something like that not too short but not too long either not to waste too much yeah and i'm going to cut it somewhere here like that and then i'm just going to fasten this here by doing a chain one and pulling and that's done okay so this is one panel done and all you have to do is just recreate this by following the instructions the exact same way and then when you have completed your second panel come back to the video and i will show you how we will join the two sides uh together we're gonna need to be able to create a neckline here so we will be probably be able to join here and then how to create a section where we're gonna put our sleeves and then joining the rest of it all the way down okay so go ahead and get the second panel going and i will see you guys when you have completed the second panel as well okay my lovelies so i have gone ahead and completed my second panel as well as you can see here okay so just exact same thing that i did with the first panel that we started together uh, which is this one here okay and as you can see i also ended it by cutting off the yarn but leaving a, uh, a little bit of it so that we can use it to join our panels together so this is the first one and this is the the what the second one technically this is the first one we did right here and the second one being the one that is on the table okay so this is it so i'm placing it how i would join it exactly here so the key here is to make sure that one of the string is on one side and the other one is on the other side because you don't want both of them on the same side and then you cannot join your work with it so that's how i place them together here okay so again the exact same size here the same length and as you can see this is pretty much how it looks like now to be able to join the sides together here you want to be able to line it up very nice like this the number of stitches here don't matter too much if they match or not it doesn't matter that much in a way but um it would be nice if it does obviously but you don't have to count or anything so you're going to place it like this and you're going to count the number of rows here and you're going to count the number of rows here as long as this matches that that's good and also it depends on how wide you want your neckline to be so if you want your neckline to be let's say something that is that wide then you would only be able to join this section here and this section here if you want it to be narrower let's say you want it to be a little bit tight then this is how you would do it okay so go ahead and determine how wide you want your neckline to be and then come back but put the stitch markers exactly where you want them to go so what i do here is i just count let's say i count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten two three four five so let's say i want to go 15 uh, inches uh, 15 stitches in then i'll just repeat the same thing on the other side by counting 15 inches as well and then taking my stitch marker and marking it where that goes and then doing the same on the other side so that's what i'm gonna do 
I will see you guys when you have done that and then I will show you guys how to join it. Okay, my lovelies. So I have gone ahead and sectioned out the section where I'm going to be joining and where I will be leaving a neckline. So as you can see here, this is going to be my neckline. I'm leaving this here. So which means I'm going to be joining these sides here from the stitch marker or from the edge here to the stitch marker, the same as on this side. And for those of you who are curious as to how many stitches, this is actually 12 stitches. So I put my stitch marker on the um, on the 13th stitch, but it's actually 12 that I'll be joining all the way to here on the 13th. I don't. The same thing on this side, okay? So I'm going to do that now. So I've already put my uh, yarn on the, on the darning needle here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do a little bit of this. And then I will have you guys do this. And then we will talk about how to measure out our arms, armpit area or our arms uh, area as well. Okay, so for this one here, after you line up, line it up. I usually go in this very first stitch here just to make sure that I do that section. And then I go into the same stitch more than like twi twice. And then for the second one, I yarn my stitch in like that. And that just closes that area nice and tight like this so it doesn't come off and then for the remaining for example on this section here i'm just gonna go on the next stitch and grab the stitches on both sides both stitches on each side and pull that through and then don't make sure you don't pull it too hard because you don't want it to kind of wrinkle up on you and then you're going to do that on the second then you match it up with the third and then you just continue to do this okay you're going to continue to do this all the way until you get to the other side and also the way you're joining it here this side that you're joining is going to be your inside so at the end of it all you can actually flip your work and this is going to be the inside of your dress and the other side is going to be the outside of your dress and i just want to say too this is how i do my joining if you guys have um, other techniques on how to join that you prefer that you just like how it looks please go ahead and use that technique i'm just showing you how i use mine so that's my 12th stitch here and i just got, went into it i'm gonna go into that 12th stitch one more time but this time i'm gonna wrap the yarn around like this and pull it in and then i'm gonna remove my stitch marker i'm gonna remove my darning needle and then i'll remove my stitch marker okay so that is the 12th stitch that i'm not gonna be working into voila so my stitch marker is gone so this is going to be the inside of your work so if you flip it on the other side that's how your other side is going to look like the one that's going to show as the part of the outside of the dress okay so that's it this is done here and then you're going to repeat the same thing on this side okay so you're just going to flip it you're going to put your your darning needle the yarn into the darning needle and do the exact same thing and then when you complete this i'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to measure out the um sleeves area and then we will go ahead and join that as well and then we will start working on the sleeves but for now just repeat what you did on the other side all here okay my lovelies so i have gone ahead and completed both sides here so as you can see this is how the joining for both sides is is looking like and like i said again we're going to be flipping our work inside out and this is the neckline here so nice and solid neckline um we'd, we're not going to do too much with the neckline but if you were to do that and you uh, uh, an advanced crochet you can obviously do either a couple of rows here to kind of pop it up a little bit but i'm going to leave it like this for my particular for the sake of this tutorial and as you can see i've also gone ahead and sectioned out where i would like my armhole to start so as you can see this is it here and what I did pretty much was I just lined my work up very nice and neat like this. And then I just counted these blocks. So I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And eight seems to be the number that I would like for the sleeve hole here. This is not how wide my arm is, but I like this sweater to have a little bit of a loose uh, arm sleeve, okay? So I counted out eight. And then on the ninth, uh, on this section here that is just a loose, I put my stitch marker and I did the same on this side. So keep in mind, I'm not counting the gappy areas. I'm just counting the solids to get to that number. Obviously, if I count this, the, the mesh as well, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then it would be uh, seven by eight. I would end up having 15. So there's 15 uh, of these uh, sections here altogether. Now, with that said, you're going to start on any side to be able to join. And you're going to make sure on this one you just line your work up very nice 
I have already cut off a yarn here and put it in my darning needle and I made sure it's long enough that it will take me from here to where my stitch marker is. Um, so make sure you do the same. And then when you line up your work very nice and straight here and you want to make sure it, like your blocks here are lining up. So you're just going to keep adjusting that as you go. So I'm going to take my yarn that I took here. I'm going to go in this very bottom stitch and then on the other side, I'm going to just hold this here and I'm going to pull. And then the first thing I'll do here is I will knot this section here. The short uh, part of this yarn and the long one that connects to my darning needle. I will just knot that multiple times to make sure it doesn't come off on me like that. Okay. And then this is going to be the tricky part. For this section, there's no actual stitches to work with here to join. So you're just going to be creative and you're going to make sure that you are grabbing a little bit of yarn like this not too low that it's gonna you know kind of mess up your work just a little bit of it and you're gonna pull don't pull too much because you want it to be to not be to not wrinkle up your work when you pull and then you just move a couple of you know milliliters or milli, um, centimeters to to the left uh, and then you just follow that all the way okay so nothing very complicated there's no stitches but you can just kind of guesstimate how wide you want your sewing to be how wide uh, each of the places you're going to is and also you're making sure you're very you're staying very shallow on top not going too deep into the into the project itself into the work and you just do that and you know make sure you make sure you don't pull too much and you make sure you don't leave it too loose either so just a nice steady motion like that so this is how it looks like and when we flip our work it's just going to look like something like that Okay, so do this all the way to where the stitch marker is and where the stitch marker is here, you can actually go past to the end of this loose area right here so that your solid starts from here or your, your sleeve starts from here and then it goes around. Okay, so you're going to work past the, this here. So actually, just to make it easy, I will remove that to show you exactly what I'm talking about. We're going to put this right here you're gonna work your sewing all the way to where this thing is so that's where your final stitch is gonna go is right here okay and then when you do that you're gonna switch and go on the other side and repeat the same thing when you have completed putting your two panels together come back to the video and I will show you how to start the sleeves okay see you guys in a bit okay my lovelies so I have gone ahead and completed uh, joining the sides so as you can see, I pretty much went along here and joined the side all the way down and the same thing on this side. So now we have kind of like a dress in a way that is completed if you were to want it to finish it and leave it like this. Um, but this is not the object objective of this project. We're going to be doing sleeves for it as well. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and get started with the sleeves and you can start on any of the sides here. So I will start with this side. This is where I ended up my sewing. I'm just going to leave this here, but um, we will weave everything at the end of the project. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and start working back here and then I'm going to show you a few rows and then I'm going to go ahead and um, and pretty much have you complete the sleeve and then we will do the second one as well. So I'm going to do start by doing a slip knot because we need to be able to start our work right here. And then remove your yarn so you will have your slip knot like this. And then you're going to go into the very middle here, very center right here. You're going to go in there. You're going to bring your loop through and then bring it through like this. And then hold this yarn nice and tight. Then you're going to start by doing a chain of two because this first row we're going to do is going to be a row of double crochet. Okay. And after that, you're going to go into this gap here and you're going to complete a double crochet. So that chain two counts as a double crochet. And then for this section here where there is a double crochet, we're going to do one double crochet there. You're going to skip right into this uh, section here, the gap area, and you're going to do two double crochet. Let's see if we can do two or three. We'll do, let's see, let's do, yeah, we will do three double crochets here. And then we'll skip to this section here and do one double crochet. Then we'll skip to this big gap and do three double crochets. And I don't mind if the sleeve is a little bit too wide because it's going to be even more comfortable. The worst thing is you don't want to do it too tight and then it doesn't fit you properly. Then you go into that section here, do one, skip directly into 
the gap and do three double crochets and then go into this area here where it's solid and do one double crochet so it should look something like that for that first row okay and you're gonna do this all around when it comes to this top section here you're going to do one double crochet right here one in the middle here if you can get in do another one right here and then one here so there should be four double crochets all together in this area here and then skip to this area and do three and then one three one three okay and then do that all the way until you come back to the bottom where we started off here i will show you how to do a row of the mesh and then uh, i will have you guys work on the sleeve until you have the length that you are looking for and for the sake of this tutorial we're doing a long sleeve so we're gonna do one that goes all the way to your wrist okay so go ahead and work on this and um, actually while we are here i'm not too far from the top i'm gonna actually just show you guys how to do that so just meet me right here so i can show you how to do that quickly it's not too far off that i have to let you guys go and come back so i'm just finishing off my yarn here so i have two i'm gonna do one more here and then one here and then three more here three and then one here and then two more here or three more here and then we should be at where i want to show you how to do it voila and then so this is where we are now we're gonna do one double crochet right here I'm gonna do one right here okay so we're just finding spaces here because we are kind of uh, there's no actual stitches to work into we just find a nice space that kind of spaces it out nice so as you can see I've done this here then I'll do one more here and I think that makes it looks nice like this is not too tight together and it's not too loose either and then we'll skip directly into the space where we have to do three like this all right and then we're gonna go into that area do one and then do three okay so finish this here all the way to the bottom and when you reach the bottom come back to the video and i will come and show you how to start the next row okay so you guys in a bit okay my lovelies so as you can see i have pretty much come around here so just so to put it this down a little bit here this is how it looks like and i came all the way around to this section here and so this is the section where I would do three, just like I did in these gaps here. So I'm going to skip right into that section and do three double crochets. So two and three. Okay. And then now that I have those three, I'm going to slip stitch on top of the chain two that I started the row with just like this. And that kind of closes this area like that. Okay. And then I'm going to start by doing a chain of three and then turning. And then from this point, I'm going to be doing the mesh. So I'm going to skip this stitch. And in this stitch right here, I'm going to do a double crochet, chain one, skip this stitch in this one, do a, a double crochet, chain one. And then we just do this all the way around. The one thing that you may want to find helpful just in case is it's good to make sure you count the number of stitches that you did in this first row here. And make sure it's kind of like a, a, an even number okay so if it's like 60 don't make it 59 make sure it's 60 write that number somewhere so that for your second side you want to make sure it's the same because if you end up having 60 on this one side uh, and then or, or whatever number it doesn't have to be 60 let's say whatever number you have here you want to be very close to if not exactly the same you want to do the exact same number or very close to it because otherwise one of your sleeve will be smaller than the other so that's just a tip that you need to do i will count mine when it's time to do the second sleeve to make sure that i have the same number of stitches that i have here on the other side but that's pretty much one tip and uh that's it and then just make sure you are using the same hook to do everything so that you're not using a very uh, a big uh, hook to make it loose uh or that you're using a too tight of a hook for uh, the, the sleeve so you want to make sure that equal you're equalizing both sides okay so i'm not going to show you too much here because this is pretty much what we did for the body you're going to do your mesh all the way to here you will have this stitch that you don't work into so that you'll do a chain one slip, uh, slip stitch on top here chain two turn do your solid row like this and then you finish that row slip stitch 
chain three start a mesh row and you just continue that until you have your whole sleeve completed a full sleeve completed okay i'm gonna do the same i'm not gonna come back to show you how to start the second one because it's the exact same like this so finish your sleeve on here and then move your yarn cut your yarn and move it to the other side and repeat the same thing and in terms of length you can always just measure from how you want it by the way you can do this to be like a like a, a three quarters of uh the sleeve or you could do it as a, a half or whatever it is but for the sake of this tutorial we're doing a full sleeve so i'm gonna do it all the way to my wrist so i'm gonna measure from here to all the way to the top of my shoulder blade and that's gonna be the length that i'm making for the sleeve when i have that like i said i'll switch to the other side do the same and then i will come back to the video to show you guys how that looks like or what that looks like and then we will pretty much have the projects completed at that time okay all right well thank you so much i will see you guys when we have completed both sleeves for the dress okay see you guys then okay my lovelies so i have gone ahead and um completed my sleeves for the sweater dress so as you can see this is the first one that i did here so i showed you how to begin it which is just to attach it to the panel uh the body panel and then work yourself using the exact same technique that we used for the body okay and this is what i ended up completing here so this is for my sleeve and for my size it pretty much goes right to my wrist here okay so it's going to be different for you so in terms of knowing how many rows to do and things like that it doesn't matter because you will just measure your arm and then that's how long you're going to do it for so this is this one side and then for the other side i completed this just right now um, and I just I did the same thing. So I did uh, the exact same of uh, number of rows on this side as I did on the other side. So you have to just worry about knowing how many rows for your size to do for one. And then when you get that number, you just duplicate it and do the exact same thing on the other side. The same thing we did for the panel, uh, the body panels. Okay. So that's pretty much it and as you can see i also make sure i end it with the row of double crochet regular double crochet just so it ends with a solid row as opposed to the mesh row like this and this is also just an option so you don't have to do it like this if you want to end it with the mesh that is absolutely up to you but this is how i like it and it's the same thing we did for the um the bottom uh of the sweater or the dress and the top as well we ended each side with uh, a solid a double crochet row okay so that's it so this is pretty much it here so i'm done i'm gonna go ahead and finish cut this off here and then i'll go ahead and weave in my ends and that's pretty much the end of this project there's not much to be done so i cut that off there and then i'll take my hook and just do a slip stitch here like this and then i'll go ahead and weave that in and weave all the ends here so i'm gonna leave my neckline the same like this so I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing a, a, a row here or anything. I'm just leaving it like this. I think it looks pretty nice, but I just have to weave in my ends everywhere. Okay. So that is the last part to do for the project. And then you're ready to wear your dress. I kind of talked to you guys about increasing if you are to want to make your uh, dress longer. Let's say you have completed it like this and you try it on and you find that it's too short and you would like to increase the length a little bit then i'm gonna explain it i'm not gonna do it because i don't have enough yarn left i ended up going running out and would probably not be able to go around here um so all you would do is just take each of the corner so either this corner here or this corner here and you just take your yarn and since this is since this is a row of um double crochet it would mean the next row you want to do is a mesh and then you will finish it off with a row of double crochet which is also why i don't want to show the increase because i don't have enough yarn to do both okay so then you will pretty much attach it somewhere in this corner here uh do your chain of uh three because you do need a chain two which counts as a double crochet plus a chain one because you're starting with the mesh row so and then you will just go and uh, skip from there you skip a stitch and then in the next stitch after that you do a double crochet chain one skip a stitch in the next stitch you do a double crochet kind of like what we do with this and then you do that all around and then for the next row you do a, a, a solid row like this and then at that point you pretty much kind of just carry on like we did this here except in this case you're going to be going around like this okay so that is how you would increase your length if you uh, find out that it's not too long for you or you want to increase the length of it all right so i'm gonna go ahead and weave my ends here and then that's pretty much the end of it so thank you so much for watching the video to the end and please share comment subscribe if you have not yet 
and also uh, ask me any questions in the comment section below okay i will see you guys in the next one bye